I built this mini zip line here for the kids and then decided that I wanted one for the adults and the teenagers in our family. <laughs> And I use the same tools, same materials, same principles, same concepts for building both in my own backyard. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that I did for my backyard. I'm not a professional, I don't know what will work in your backyard, but this is what worked in mine and what I did to try and make it extra safe so that the kids can play on it like this one. I can leave and they can play on it and I know that they won't get hurt. When I started this project, I wanted to make sure I had a clear plan in mind. I practiced with the kid zip line that I showed you at the beginning and made sure that I had an idea of how to safely install a zip line and did a little bit of research online. The first step that I did was to map out in the woods where I wanted my zip line to go and then get a set of, uh, you know, shears and, and kind of clear a path for me and you'll see in some cases it took more than shears. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, the course. There's the platform that starts with a zip line um, going down to that second platform there. This is a 40 foot zip line. And then we found this tree here and turn. There's the next tree. So I'm gonna have an obstacle here, I think a bridge. Um, and then I went to that tree. Notice I'm working on that one right now. This one I cleared quite wide. You can see that that's a really wide cleared path straight through there to that platform. And that's back where we started. See, that's, that's the original platform where we started the tour. Because we're doing a fairly big sized project, what I recommend is having some kind of 100 foot tape or um, what I actually like even better is a laser tape. In the woods, I measured the distance between the trees and the measurements I got was that one of them was about 70 feet, one was 31 feet, 33 feet, and about 47 feet. This does not need to be very accurate for the um, picture I'm about to draw, but it's nice to have them be a, approximately equal to, to what um, the actual length is um, to scale. helped me to visualize and it helped when I was putting together a parts list. So here we go. I have my 70 foot. That's going to be a zip line. So that's going to be a single line. I have my 47 foot. It's going to be a zip line. This one here I'm going to have as a bridge. So I'm going to draw two lines and just a couple of... I'm going to have it be kind of a walking platform. And this is just a visual so that I remember what it is. Now, if I am building a bridge platform like that, I also want to remember that I have to have a safety line. So I'm going to draw a dotted line on there just to remind me for parts when I'm ordering parts. This one here I'm going to um, have what I'm thinking right now at least, and it, it'll depend is that it will be you're walking along one line and you have one two lines on either side so you can kind of hold on as you go in, in sort of a, a, a V shape almost one line that you're walking on and then you've got your two two lines up top so if I'm running three lines there and one safety up above that's fine if I find that when I'm trying to order parts um, this extra what was that one 30 31 feet if I find that that I'm short by 31 feet or it makes me have to order another 500 yards of it or whatever, then I'll just make it into one above, one below, um, and that can be simple. So there we have the basic drawing of the, the ropes course. I can tilt it sort of there. I also acquired recently, which is really nice, monkey bar set. And they are 
eight feet so it fits across there. So if I set monkey bars along between the platforms, then I could have people walk on that, which means I need another safety line here. So that is my ropes course. This design required five platforms, so with my backyard uh, project, I wanted to build platforms that looked like this. the quarter inch cable for all of this and this is what I needed to do to calculate the the distance so I just started adding up these lengths the zip lines are just going to have a single cable going across them so that's 47 here and of course because I'm ordering parts I round it so that's about 50 and then I need 30 here but it needs to be 30 30 30 so that's about a hundred and then this one here is 30, 30, 30, 30, about 120. So we'll say 150 because um, I always round up. Then I have this 70 foot one there. I'm going to just say 100. Now, I, I round way up like that. And I think that that's an okay thing to do because we also have to consider that we're going around the trees. So we go around each of these trees. The circumference of a tree that has a two foot diameter is about six feet. Plus I wanna have some extra slack at the end. So basically I'm giving myself an extra 10, 10 feet for each tree each time I go around it. So 10, 20, well 10 for this one, 10 for, and then 10 for this one. Or in other words, about 20 feet extra for each line. So 20, 40, 60, 80, an extra 100 feet um, just to go around the trees. And then I've got that little section there, but I compensated for that by going from 120 to 150. So if I just add those up, then that gives me um, 500, right? Yeah. And that's what I ordered. I got it in 250 foot spools that came with cable clamps. And that to me was very helpful because I, it came 250 plus, it came with like 50 clamps. So I was able to order that and save a little bit of money. I'll put the, the link in the video description. Quick recap of everything I showed you on my zip line course. First, I decided which type of course I was gonna do, whether it was gonna be a kid course or a big kid course. It ended up being a little bit bigger of a project. Um, so I had to measure and clear some area, make a plan for the course. I decided I was gonna use platforms and I had to figure out the materials that I would need for those platforms and then also uh, the materials that I would need for the entire course. That material and the places where I found that they were cheapest and also um, still high quality, I've put links for all of that in the video description below. Also a note here is that I did quite a bit of research online to figure out um, the minimum requirements and then go above and beyond those minimum requirements. And you'll see that reflected in my future videos as I show you how I built platforms, how I made the zip lines, and then um, how I made the obstacles for the high ropes course. Hope that video is helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.